If you are worshiping with us in person, you can use one of the apps provided to give your tithes and offerings, or fill out an envelope and drop your tithes and offerings in the offering box provided at the front of the church, the door, or after service. Please join the Dublin Baptist Church family on Saturday, March 30th, 2024, for a fellowship breakfast at Golden Corral. Located on Gaston Road, Glen Allen, Virginia, the cost of breakfast will be $12. The senior citizen discount is available for those who qualify. Please arrive by 9.15 a.m. so you can be seated together at 9.30. We look forward to seeing you there for food, fun, and fellowship. We would like to get a head count to give the Golden Corral by March 24, 24. Please see if Joan Jackson can sign up to attend. There is a sign-up sheet that's located right over here in the annex. So please remember to sign up. There will be no Easter sunrise service this year. Our Easter Sunday service will be held at our regular scheduled starting time at 11 a.m. Today is the second Sunday, and um, we have no special donations for, uh, uh, for your offering, but we do encourage everyone to please remember to bring your non-perishable food items for the Missionary Ministry Food Drive for Feed More. This concludes the announcements and the uh, notices of the day. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here I am again. <laughs> I'm talking about this 100th year celebration for the Fair Baptist Church. Amen. 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 We've been telling you, get ready, get ready. The next phase of the process, well, Ready or not, the Grand Centennial Celebration Caravan is coming your way. On uh, April 28, 2024, we will begin the Centennial Celebration here at Goodwill with a message from our very own pastor, Reverend Eric Graham. The celebration will then move to Belmont Recreation Center for a banquet style event with a message from Reverend Gregory Beecham. He's pastor of the Divine Baptist Church. Don't miss your opportunity to be a part of this event. Members are asked to donate $100 towards this monumental occasion. Donations are still being accepted. So if you want to get signed a week, get signed a week. If you want to put 10 to 1 foot 10, it's your choice. But we're only asking for donations. Feel like you want to be part of this historical occasion? Commemorate your family with a special message or photo in the Goodwill Baptist Church souvenir book. Family ads can be obtained in the souvenir booklet. Full page, $100. Half page, $50. Quarter page, $25. Completed electronic family ad should be sent to Sharina Perry at gmail.com by March 31st. 2024, so I say again, get ready, because you don't want to be left behind. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. God wants his blood to flow through us, through you. It is unchanged, and nothing can separate you from it. Let God's love within you be the greatest power you know. Let it guide you to move forward and embrace the wonderful life that it means meant just for you. Go forward, love, be loved. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray I will ever feel and know your love. Keep my heart tender towards you, that I may ever embrace your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we go forward through the remainder of the week, let us focus and meditate on the following scripture. Monday, Matthew 18, 21-22, Then Peter came and said to them, Tuesday, Matthew 6, 11-12, Give us this day our daily bread. 
Wednesday, Genesis 50, 19. Do not be afraid. Thursday, John 20, 21 through 23. Jesus said to them again. Friday, Luke 23, 33 through 34. They crucified Jesus there. Saturday, Galatians. Um, chapter 3, verse 13 through 14. Bear with one another. Be encouraged and be blessed. Amen.
Look in on those that wanted to make it out the church this morning, but couldn't. Give them a, a thought that just keep looking up. Keep looking toward the hills from which comes the help of the answer of God, and they will be on. Father God, I thank you this day for myself and my family, my church family. Bless my pastor, Lord God, that to come forth later on with the ministry. Because I know it's going to be just Father God. Amen. I thank you, Father God, for the members here. I thank you for traveling members. I thank you, Father God, because you watched over us this morning. And you woke us up this morning, Father God, in our right mind. And I give all honor and glory and praise to you this day, God. Because without you in our lives, where would we be? What would we have? We thank you. We praise your holy name. And we'll continue to praise you until the end of time.
I think when you have decided, amen, I think when you have decided to cry your last tear yesterday, it's time for a shout of victory. Come on, come on. I don't know what you might be going through today. Come on. I don't know what you might be going through today. Come on. I don't know what you might be going through today, but don't let the devil get you down with Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus is about to raise you up, amen. Yeah. Every yeah. step you take, come, yeah. coming closer to yeah. Jesus, walking with Jesus, is yeah. another step unto your victory. Come on, somebody. He say, I'll cry every week with that. Come on, somebody. He said, I'll give you joy for sadness, amen. I'll give you an anointing, amen. I'll give you the ability to walk through that thing like it ain't never happened. Somebody need to understand that. Jesus ain't going nowhere, amen. It may be dark outside, amen. It may be cloudy, amen. You might not see your way through, but you better understand Jesus is the way through. Come on, God. As long as you hold on to what? To God's unchanging hand. Come on, somebody. Give God some glory in the house, amen. Ain't God good, y'all. Ain't God good. Ain't God good. As he is, he's better to us than we could ever be. Even unto ourselves. We just thank the Lord today. Amen. For all, all of that, for what the Lord is doing, how he is moving. And I tell you today, I think they like saving time caught a few folk today. That's all right. <laughs> they like saving time caught a few today. Amen. That's all right. Amen. But we that are here are, are going to give God the glory. That we that are here are, are seeking our breakthrough. We that are here are, are seeking a word from the Lord. We that are here are all about giving God the glory. We that are here are here to gain the victory. We that are here. Come on, somebody. Somebody said it is good for us to be here. Come on, somebody. I'm just here to say it right now. It is good for you to be here. Somebody believe that today? I just believe it. It is just good for us to be here. It is good for you, but it's so enough good for me. See, I want to be in the place. Amen. For the Lord to get me, reach me, touch me, pull me, lift me, bless me, hold me, keep me. I want to be in the place where the Lord can deliver me, set me free, set my feet on the rock to stay. I want to be in the place where God can pour into me, can pour into me the joy of my very salvation. Come on. We are in the right place. It is good for us to be here. Come on. Put down some glory right there. God, we thank you, amen. God, God, I, I tried to sit over there and not say nothing during the service, but y'all know that stuff be built up in me, amen. Oh, God, we thank you, God. We just want to let God lose. Come on, now. God, we just give God a real good praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, open us up. Open us up, God. Open us up, God. Oh, God, I thank you. You know, when you give God that real good praise, it just something it just moves on the inside. Come on, y'all know what God do for us. Y'all know. Amen. When we give God that real good praise, God begin to open some things up. And see, God begin to take away your inefficiencies. And you stop holding in. And let God take it out. When we give God that real good praise, we can open ourselves up to receive all the goodness that the Lord had in store for us. How many of y'all want to receive everything that God does? How many of y'all want to receive everything that God does? I want you to receive it. I want you to receive it. Come on. I want you to receive it. I want you to receive it. I want you to receive it. Every good thing, every pleasant thing that the Lord has for you, it comes when you open up and yield unto the Lord. Ah, uh, can I tell you today, whatever it is that you think you need, whatever it is, come on, come on, come on, whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you're waiting for, whatever it is that you're hoping for, whatever it is you believe it for, come on and open up to God. Come on and open up to God. 
give you the praise, God. You give me the glory, God. Come on. Come on, y'all. Of 
purged our sins. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. May the Lord ever add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it in our hearts and therefore make it really good for our souls. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you. God, we have praised, we have worshiped, and we have yielded. And now, God, it is preaching time. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes preaching easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes hearing your word easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes doing your word real easy. And now, God, I pray that you give me your, your servant deep down into the well of anointing. Bring me up dripping wet that I might be able to preach a word from on high. And God, when you're partnering with me, God, while you're partnering with me, oh, uh, in the anointing, God, I pray right now that you that you partner with me in the covering of your covenant. Cover me, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, that the enemy, that the devil will know whose I am and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name we do pray and let the household of faith say amen. 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 This morning for our time together in the word of God, I want to, I want to preach, amen, amen, I want to preach for the series, amen, um, uh, uh, pursuing God's word, and the subject that we'll be preaching from this morning, it is, it is titled, amen, can't nobody do me like Jesus, oh, Nobody no. do me like Jesus. No. Can I tell you today no. that is one of those phrases, amen, that you will assuredly hear from church folk, amen. When you hear, can't nobody do me like Jesus, it will definitely be accompanied by some approving head nods, amen, some hand claps of joy, amen, some, some, you know that's right, comments, amen, and a bunch of hearty amens, that phrase, can't nobody do me like Jesus, amen, in your praise report, it fits well at the beginning to jumpstart your testimony, it fits well in the middle uh, as a bridge of your testimony, uh, or, or even at the end, uh, as punctuation uh, to your testimony. Can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus. Can I tell you, that phrase is just appropriate. Uh, it is a true anyway. statement if there ever was one. Uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Uh, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, whatever it is, uh, I don't care what it is, if Jesus is involved, uh, can't nobody do uh, me like Jesus. Uh, you ought to go ahead and give God some praise for that truth. Amen. 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 Walk with me now. Walk with me. Amen. I've got a problem. Amen. I have a problem. And my problem is this. Do we really know Jesus like that, uh, or are we just repeating what sounds good? Uh, that I got there and they can't nobody do me like Jesus uh, sounds good, but can I take you a little deeper than that? Can you allow me to be your pastor, amen, uh, and take you a little deeper, amen? And I want you to be clear on my position, because I'm not tap tripping, amen, I'm not going to get up here and say, church is whack, I ain't doing that, amen, you where I'm coming from, I ain't tired, amen, I ain't doing that, bless his heart, amen, as you say, bless his heart, amen, uh, but I want you to be clear, uh, uh, to, 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 to borrow a line, amen, uh, from a couple of old songs in the church, amen. Uh, you know that song that said, What's the matter with Jesus? Uh, Y'all know the refrain, He's all right. But another old hymn says, uh, I find no fault in Him. He what? He's wonderful. Come on, somebody. Uh, so look, look, uh, that's how I believe, amen. So my problem uh, is not with Jesus. Uh, he is just who he says he is. Uh, he will do just what he says uh, he will do. Uh, no, my problem is, uh, do we know him uh, like we say we know him? Uh, see, look, uh, phrases like, can't nobody do me like Jesus uh, should signify an intimacy. Uh, it should signify uh, a trust in, a belief of uh, the abilities of Jesus uh, that goes way beyond uh, a casual acquaintance. Amen. But oftentimes, uh, um, the phrase, uh, amen, can't nobody do me like Jesus to some uh, is more about something they have heard. Uh, 
that than what they truly know. Come on, somebody. These are some, it's just church speak, uh, something church folks are supposed to say that, that will portray them at a certain level. Uh, uh, sometimes this is something uh, that will create an image. You know how folk walk around with a Bible, folk walk around with a long skirt on, and folk walk around with this or that, and they look like church, if they man, uh, so the people think that if you look like church, act like church, talk like church, you must be of the church. So for some time, they man, uh, can I tell you, sometimes uh, looks and words can, can be deceiving. They man, uh, but can I tell you, this morning, image uh, does not mean much uh, when you are in need of a touch from the Lord, uh, and your faith is being tested, amen. Uh, see, just knowing the phrase that pays, uh, that is not enough. Uh, do you, uh, do we know why can't nobody do me like Jesus? See, it is in the knowing why. Oh, can I tell you that the revealed information pertaining to that, which is spiritual, the knowing why, the revelation, all that causes the things that we speak out of our mouths uh, to have a divine power in our lives and to carry substance and to get results in the kingdom of God. See, knowledge is revealed to the ear. Hearing, that's hearing, hearing that our knowledge increases our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And look, and from the ear it goes to the mind, that transformed born mind that is renewed and sanctified in Jesus, that we have the same mind. There was also in Christ Jesus in our faith. Then it goes to the changed heart. And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And will say and believe in those life-changing utterances that are that are profitable for our deliverance, for our help, for our freedom, are all through the kingdom of God. See, when we truly get it, uh, the promises to us about Jesus uh, and from Jesus uh, take on a whole new meaning. Uh, see, when we get it, uh, by his stripes, uh, we are healed, uh, will trump any sickness or disease. Uh, when we get it, uh, we know that Jesus said, Lo, I am with you uh, always, even uh, until the end of the world. Uh, and I look, that will let you know that you're never going to be alone. Uh, when you truly get that revelation, uh, uh, when you get it, uh, knowing that God will supply all your needs uh, according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus, uh, you know beyond a sorrow and doubt uh, that all your needs are already met. Uh, see, when you truly get it, uh, you realize that through Jesus, the kingdom of God uh, is available to you. Uh, when you know what you're talking about, uh, uh, when it comes to Jesus, uh, the devil has no chance uh, to win over you. Uh, see, anybody that wants to know uh, uh, what they are talking about today, uh, do you want to know what you're praising God about? Do you know what, you, what it really, do you want to know what it really means? Uh, amen. Uh, oh, oh, to be able to say, can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus. Because uh, see, if you're, if you're going to be able to say, uh, oh, can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus uh, and enjoy the benefits of the truth, uh, well, there are some things uh, that you need to know uh, that you got to do. Uh, one of those first and foremost things uh, is that you got to pursue the word of God. Come on, somebody. Uh, to really pursue uh, the word of God. In the word of God, uh, all you want to find your answer. Amen. Uh, can I tell you? Uh, there are some things, uh, amen, that you got to know, uh, amen, uh, oh, uh, and what a privilege it is to hear from Jesus. Uh, uh, as we look, amen, uh, at our scripture, amen, uh, first thing uh, God said, uh, uh, God who had sundry times and in diverse manners uh, spoke in the past unto the fathers uh, by the prophets uh, have in these last days uh, spoken to us by his son. Uh, and I tell you, it's been a plan of God uh, from the beginning uh, to receive, to reveal himself unto man. Uh, see, uh, all uh, the walks with Adam uh, in the cool of the day uh, were not uh, were not so God could get exercise uh, or even to check on his investments. Uh, but so man uh, could learn God uh, and learn who God was. Uh, the first revelation of God uh, was through Adam. Uh, see, God revealed to Adam his, his reason for creating the earth uh, and for forming man. Uh, 
God revealed to Adam uh, that God had put into being uh, and existence the order uh, that he wanted the earth to follow uh, from that moment on uh, there will be nothing new under the sun uh, but that God had already put everything uh, here uh, all that was needed for man to succeed uh, but can I tell you Adam sinned uh, and broke the connection uh, so God began to reveal himself uh, through a series uh, of, of less than uh, less than ideal connections uh, such as Enoch, uh, Methuselah, and Noah. Uh, the next revelation of God uh, uh, was through the spiritual forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, uh, and Jacob. Uh, then it was through uh, the laws given to Moses. Uh, then it was through the prophets. Uh, all of these, uh, as the Bible calls them, uh, um, sundry times uh, and diverse manners. Uh, they look uh, these separate and very times were designed to bring forth a deeper knowledge of God. But can I tell you right now, they were less than ideal. See, we're talking about can't nobody do me like Jesus. Watch this. They were less than ideal. It was always somebody, something missing. But here it is in the last day. Or in that period of time that the Spirit of the Lord is to be poured out upon all flesh when your sons and your daughters shall prophesy to the Jews first and then to all the nations of the world. Uh, do we begin to see and experience our privilege? Can I tell you uh, that it is a privilege to be living here uh, in the last day uh, because we begin to really see uh, who God is. Uh, and watch this. Uh, here's how we're going to see. Uh, we are in a, this is the place. Uh, this is the time uh, where the Spirit of the Lord is moving upon all flesh. Uh, and can I tell you uh, that the last days uh, have more to do with the revelation of who God is uh, than doom and gloom and destruction. Uh, the revelation, I'm sorry, the last days uh, deal with the revelation of who God is, uh, not as told to us, come on, get this, uh, not as told to us by our third party uh, and only given to our selected blue, our selected few, uh, but shown to us uh, by his perfect son, Jesus. Uh, oh, I'm here to tell you, uh, Jesus is showing us God uh, like nobody ever could before, uh, like no word, no prophet, uh, Amen. No king, no priest uh, could ever do. Because uh, can't nobody do uh, me like Jesus. Amen. Uh, but it's shown to us by Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's freely given to all. Uh, see, God sent his son uh, and we and he called him Jesus. Uh, and he came to bear witness of the Father God uh, through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel. Uh, the good news. Uh, Jesus brought a message uh, that no one before him could bring. Uh, a divine message from God, uh, from the ultimate messenger of God, uh, wrapped in human flesh, uh, that was tempted of all things, but knew no sin. Uh, can I tell you, it is our privilege uh, to be living in these last days, uh, these days that Jesus has uh, reconnected our spirits uh, all through the spirit of God, uh, through salvation and relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, see, before we could hear from Jesus, uh, the message and the revelation about God uh, and what he desires for you, uh, and, and, and I would, as it were, describe uh, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13 and 9, uh, before Jesus came, uh, before Jesus was the one uh, that couldn't nobody do what he could do, amen. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 and 10 say, for we know in part uh, and we prophesy in part uh, but, when the he, but when that which is perfect is come, uh, then uh, with that which is in part shall be done away with uh, can I tell you, Jesus is that uh, which is perfect. Come on, y'all. Uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I'm uh, going to tell you, uh, we have the privilege uh, of, of, of the reality of Jesus, uh, and that is that he is a living word. Come on, uh, you got to get that part. Jesus is the living word, uh, and because Jesus is the living word, uh, we got to pursue the word of God. Uh, if we're not pursuing the word of God, uh, we can't really know uh, that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Uh, see, when we hear uh, from Jesus, uh, the 
message is abundantly clear. Uh, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, that whosoever believeth on him uh, shall not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, you don't just get that anywhere. Uh, you got to pursue the word of God, the living word, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, see, our privilege is uh, to hear uh, that message loud and clear. Uh, and our privilege is uh, to follow that word. Uh, it is our privilege to know uh, that can't nobody do uh, me like Jesus. Uh, see, then if you're really going to understand that uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus, amen, uh, then you got to see the very pedigree of Jesus. Uh, oh, you can find, watch this. Uh, the very pedigree of Jesus, amen, uh, is in the word. Uh, sometimes, amen, we skip over, amen, uh, the very lineage of Jesus. That's his pedigree. Uh, you know, that scripture they talk about, this one we get that one, and that one we get the other one, and the other one we get this one, that we get, we get, we get. Uh, see, that's show you where Jesus came from. Uh, let's show you how God ordained him to come. You know, Jesus came through a line. Uh, he came through a line of, of, of kings and priests, uh, but he also came through a line of uh, of prostitutes and, Ill, and people of ill repute. He came through the folk, amen. It was in the penthouse, and he came through the folk. It was in the outhouse. Some of them don't him, but he came. He got a pedigree in Jesus. Look at verse 2. The second part of verse 2 is that whom he hath appointed, heir of all things. I told you, heir of all things. By whom also he made the world. See, Jesus' pedigree, it didn't matter who he came through on the earth, it was who he came from in heaven. Come on, somebody. That's what happened. That's one of the reasons why I can't know why to be like Jesus. But if you don't pursue the word, you don't get all that. And if you don't get all that, you don't make none. Because you don't really know why I can't know that to be like Jesus. See the pedigree of Jesus uh, puts him in a very unique position. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the only begotten Son uh, of God is unique. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. See, Jesus was more uh, than just the boss's son. Uh, his pedigree was based on more than kinship. Uh, Jesus' pedigree uh, uh, was the firstborn of God. Uh, and as the firstborn of God, I'm about to teach in a minute. Uh, as the firstborn of God, uh, Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. Uh, and as the firstborn, uh, Jesus. Jesus is in a position of authority or by his pedigree and responsibility by his pedigree to his father. But he also, watch this, but he also has responsibility to the other heirs that come after him. And the father, Colossians 1, says in verse 50, verses 15 through 17, who, and that who is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, I said firstborn, the heir, the firstborn of every creature, verse 16, before by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible. We're talking about of natural origin and of the spiritual origin. Come on, can't nobody do the like Jesus, whether they be thrones, whether they be dominions, whether they be principalities or powers, all things were created by him, for him, can't nobody do the like Jesus, and he is before all things, and by him all things uh, all things consist. Uh, see, the pedigree of Jesus uh, gave him the right uh, to be the creator uh, and the sustainer of life. Uh, it gave him the right uh, to be the author and the finisher uh, of our faith. Uh, it gave him the right uh, to be our deliverer, to be the conqueror, to be the liberator, amen, uh, to be the blesser, to be the shepherd, uh, to be the door, uh, or to be the water. Oh God, oh God, the way, the truth, and the life. It gave him the power, the power, the power to be a resurrection. Come on, come on, somebody. Woo! He is unique and part of God. If you pursue the word, you'll see he is unique and part of God. You have to be able to say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. But can I tell you, there was another part to the play real Jesus. Colossians 1, I have a word preacher, amen, Colossians 1, 19 says, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Oh, what's this? So not only did Jesus create 
life, but he fulfilled life too. What? He fulfilled life. How? How could he fulfill life? Because what? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. That means that, that all that is good, that all that is complete, all that is it is whole. Whatever has no lack, whatever is not broken, whatever has no shortcoming, uh, whatever has no fault, whatever has no discomfort, whatever has no disease, it has its origin in Jesus Christ, the source of all that is good. Amen. As Mr. Smallwood would say, Jesus. So you the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect only comes from you. You are the heart of my contentment. The hope for all I do. Yeah, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. See, Jesus, see, church, the pedigree of Jesus lets us know that Jesus is the source of all that's good and perfect. And when you are in need of that which is good and perfect, and all that means is what he is righteous and complete. Jesus is where you get it from. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. But as you understand and craft the pedigree of Jesus, you begin to see why and what. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. See my last point. Amen. To know that they look that if you didn't know that can't nobody do me like Jesus. But then you have to see his purpose, his power, and his productivity. Come on. See all Jesus. Oh, church, <laughs> what God would, what Jesus, what God would, uh, uh, what good would Jesus be to any of us if he did not have the power and the authority to get things done on our behalf? He would not be able to say, can't nobody do me like Jesus, because Jesus could do everything we need. Come on, somebody. See, in verse 3, the first part, it says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. This is a deeper look at the purpose of Jesus. Jesus came to reveal God to mankind that not only could man know God, but see God fully and live. Somebody need to get this. See, the visible purpose of God is expressed in his glory. When you said that, I about to jump out my seat. And the visible presence of God is expressed in his glory. The glory of God is his love, his goodness, and his wisdom, and his power. And look, these attributes are are so pure and so intense that they make themselves apparent or manifest themselves in a light that no man could look on fully and live. See, the best that man could do was to catch a glimpse of God's glory. And I'm here to tell you, when you're in darkness, amen, just a glimpse of the light is good. It makes you feel good. You feel all right. You get some hope just from getting a glimpse of oh God. Anybody ever been in a dark room? Couldn't see your way across the room, but you caught the outline of a light and it made your heart leap because you know you can make it to the other side. I'll just tell you right now, that was one time, that's all we had. Oh, can I tell you, that's all we had was a glimpse, and everybody couldn't get the glimpse. If you look at the glimpse that God is talking about, or the best man to do, but catch a glimpse of the glory, watch this Moses. After being 40 days, and 40 nights in the very presence of God. Moses still hadn't had a glimpse. He begged God for a glimpse of God's glory. And God said, you can't see me and live. But God gave Moses a solid day. And he hid Moses in the crevice on the, on the mountainside. And after God had passed by, he let Moses see his back. And can I tell you, Moses brought the shout of joy and dance because he just got a glimpse. He got a glimpse. He got a glimpse of the glory. When you ain't got nothing, a glimpse is better than nothing. Amen. But so watch this. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Watch this. But Jesus came and Jesus took, took the glory of God and all his power and all his love 
in all its ability and he wrapped the glory of God in flesh. I'm here to tell you, can't nobody do me like Jesus and wrap the glory of God uh, in, in, in human flesh, shielding mankind from the intense light of God's love, goodness, wisdom, and power, but not shielding mankind from the works and the benefits of the glory of God. See, Jesus came so you could have more than a glimpse. See, you just, oh God, we had to make do with a glimpse, just a little bit of power, just a little tiny sliver of light. If I were to shut this down, I know it's still light here, but it's only it's only a glimpse of the light. It's only when I lift it up, all that I can begin to slow down. Somebody better get that. Somebody better get that. It's only when I lift it up. It's only when I put Jesus in his right place in my life. It's only when I give Jesus the glory. And when I magnify him. He said if man will lift me up, I'll draw a man unto me. And when you then when you begin to lift them up, you begin to see the light like darkness. Can I tell you that when you've been in darkness, if you take one exception to light, oh God, can't nobody do you like Jesus? Come on, somebody, give him a of praise. Watch this. Yeah, man. In Jesus, would mankind be able to take a good long look at God? Take a good long look. Drink him up. Drink him up. Pursue God. Pursue his word. Get in his word. Do you know at one time the word was not for you? The word was for the priest. The word was for the educated ones in the temple. And we got an opportunity to pursue God's word. To see any pursuit of God's word, we begin to see God's light. And we get, get to see the light of God through his son Jesus. We get to know Jesus in an intimate way. So when we begin to say, we can't say, can't nobody do me like Jesus if we don't know her, if we don't know Jesus in an intimate way. But God, God has put it so the world will be able to take a good long look at God through Jesus and know that God was everything that he hoped he would be. He was everything he hoped he would be in Jesus Christ. Why? Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can I tell you the next part? And verse 3 says, and upholding all things by the word of his power. See, from the beginning, the evidence of the power of Jesus was the creative force that came from his words. So you got to understand that the power of Jesus was his ability to call things which was not even into existence. See, whatever he spoke, it came to be. Whatever he asked for, it came to pass. But Jesus prayed to God, the Father, for things. No, he didn't pray not because he had to, but for the sake of those that were listening. See, John 14, I'm sorry, John 11, 41 and 42 said, Jesus said, Father, I know you hear always, hear me always, but I ask now because of those listening. So they would need that you say. Uh, see, it was understood uh, that the power of Jesus was to create and to bring forth uh, into existence. So even on earth, uh, uh, Jesus had the ability to keep it moving. Uh, when he saw something that was out of order, uh, he spoke a word. Uh, and, and by his divine power, uh, that word upheld all things uh, and restored all things. Uh, then the rest of verse 3 says this. Uh, when he had by himself uh, purged our sins, uh, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Oh, you got to understand that. That is scriptural for can't nobody do me like Jesus. See, this is not a catchy phrase, but it's a real thing ordained of God. The mission of Jesus was to save us from our sins, and once all was accomplished on earth, Jesus took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. See, church, there is a reason why that we are able to do mighty works in the kingdom. It's because we are allowed to pray and ask for things in the name of Jesus. Oh, it is by his name that things are accomplished. It is by his name that things are created. It is by his name that victory is won. It is by his name and there is no other name under heaven that can give you the victory or even save your soul. And can I tell you again, when you pursue the word, you see what? Can't nobody do it like Jesus. Oh, but we get to do, we get to do what we're 
we get to do the works that we do uh, that Jesus finishes the work uh, that he was sent to do on the cross. Uh, so God gave Jesus, here it is, uh, a name that is above every name, uh, and at that name, uh, every knee shall bow, uh, and every tongue confess uh, that uh, Jesus is Lord uh, over all, uh, over all creation. Uh, and watch this, over all situations of your life. Uh, can nobody uh, do you like Jesus, because that's power in the name, uh, but along with the power Power, there is productivity uh, when we say uh, can't nobody do us like Jesus uh, because the name of Jesus is still producing. Uh, can I tell you Jesus didn't stop producing just because he sat down uh, on the right hand of the Father because every time you call on his name uh, you can believe it can't nobody do you like, like Jesus every time you call on his name by faith uh, he is still producing uh, he produces life uh, oh, he produces miracles uh, he is still producing Producing victory, he is still producing liberty. Oh, he is still producing deliverance. He is still producing salvation. He is still producing blessings. He is still producing. Oh, because Jesus is producing for you and me. When you say, "Can't nobody do me like Jesus," it's true. Huh? Not a cliche, or not just church speak. Because he's still doing it, doing it, and doing it well. Come on, somebody. But now he's doing it. He may not. He's not just doing it in the beginning. Huh? When he said, let there be light, huh? he's just not doing it in a manger. Huh? As he fulfilled prophecy, he's not just doing it at the temple at the age of 12. Huh? As he was about his father's business, huh? he's not just doing it in Galilee huh? or in Jerusalem or even in Judea. Huh? He's doing it from the right hand of the Father and he's doing it seated in heavenly places, making intercession for you and me. Huh? So showing up huh? where he is, huh? where he stands. What he does, who he is, and what he is about. So enough, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Because he is the only one that, that was made for the job. Buddha couldn't do it. Amen. Confucius couldn't do it. They couldn't do it like Jesus. Abraham couldn't do it. David couldn't do it. Uh, Moses couldn't do you like Jesus. Uh, Solomon couldn't do you like Jesus. Uh, not in the province could do you like Jesus. Uh, not an apostle. Uh, nobody, nobody, but nobody uh, can do me like Jesus. Uh, not an angel in heaven. Uh, not a cherubim flying around the throne. Uh, not a seraphim. Uh, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody can do me like Jesus. Jesus was built for this. And he proved it every step of the way uh, from the cross. Uh, amen. Uh, even on the way to the cross uh, from the statement. Uh, but he, he was proving it from the statement. Nevertheless, uh, I will uh, in the garden of betrayal. Uh, or when he was betrayed by, Ju by, by Judas, uh, Judas was proving it. Can't nobody do uh, do you like Jesus? Uh, uh, from the denial of Peter uh, and the running away of all the disciples, the self of John, uh, he was proving it. Uh, can't nobody. Uh, do you like Jesus? When he was taken from judgment hall to judgment hall, after being beat all night long, whipped to the flesh, fell from his bones, he was proving it. Ain't nobody. Do you like Jesus? Amen. Look for the crown of thorns that was put on his head to be nailed on the cross. He was proving it. Can't nobody. Do you like Jesus? Uh, for the forgiving of all those uh, that murdered him, uh, to the looking after of his mother, uh, to the saving of the thief on the cross, uh, he was proving it. Can't nobody do it. Do you like Jesus? Uh, for the sun refusing to shine, uh, and Jesus giving up the ghost, uh, and hanging his head in the box of his shoulders, uh, and dying on the cross, uh, just for you and me. Uh, he was proving it. Can't nobody uh, do you like Jesus? Uh, for and send it even into hell and take the keys of that kind at the grave from the enemy. He was proven in it. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. All the way to the third day morning when Jesus got up with our power in his hand. Oh, that he would have power to be that we would have the power to be saved, to be righteous, to be whole, to be well, to be healed, to be blessed, to be delivered, to overcome, to be set free. Jesus was proven it. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like can you say it today now? Are you pursuing the word of God? If you're pursuing the word of God, it's written on any page. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. 
on every page. Can't nobody do me like Jesus with every breath. Can't nobody do me like Jesus with every heartbeat. Can't nobody do me like Jesus with the blood when the woman in my veins. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Being the right man. Can't nobody do me like Jesus for the activity of my limbs. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. Come on, somebody. Get down to the right here. Ain't nobody. Nobody, nobody, yeah, hey, can't go back. No matter what your situation is. Can't nobody fix it like Jesus. Can't nobody stop it like Jesus. Can't nobody turn away on like Jesus. Can't nobody lift you above like Jesus. Can't nobody take you through it like Jesus. Whatever situation you in, can't nobody do you no know Jesus. The enemy wants you to believe that your situation is, is abnormal. Oh, ain't nobody ever came back from that. That's, that's impossible. Well, my God, my Jesus, specialized in what we think is impossible. Things that we ain't never seen, he seen. He was before all things. Through him, all things exist. Through him, all things consist. He will be after all things. See, God has told us this year to pursue his word. Then the word is the answer. And the word is the answer. And the word is the enlightenment. And the word is the power. And the word, and the living word, is Jesus Christ in the beginning. What's the word? And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word looked nothing that was made unless it was made by him. The word. Jesus is the word. When we're pursuing God's word, we're pursuing his son. We're pursuing Jesus. And the more you pursue Jesus, Jesus ain't running from you. He is not running from you. He is not running from you. If you pursue Jesus, you're going to catch him. You hear what I'm telling you? He ain't running. He ain't playing high and go see. He is, he is not. But where he is is in the pathway that God has set him. And if you get on the, if you get in God's word, you will get in Jesus. And, 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 and that phrase, can't nobody do me like Jesus. It become more than just a catchy cliche of the church. It become power unto your life. You can tell the enemy right now with everything that you know about Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I need deliverance. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I need a healing. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I need peace of mind. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I need joy. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. I need a hope. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. It fits when you know it like that. It fits when you know him like that. It fits laying up in a hospital bed. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Body wrapping down these can't nobody do you like Jesus. I got some loopers in here. Can I tell y'all? Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody. Can't nobody. I got some cancer. Victor. Victor's. Yeah. Yeah. Can't nobody yeah. do you like Jesus. Yeah. I got some heart murder. Who did the heart murder? Hey, heart murder. Yeah. Hey, a hole in their heart. But yeah. I'll tell you right now, can't nobody yeah. do me yeah. like Jesus. Yeah. Strong men have been fed on their back, but they up and strong and kicking. Because can't nobody do me yeah. like Jesus. Going through my body, rock with pain. Can't even stand my pain leg to touch my legs sometimes. But still, can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Going through grief. Going through pain. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. 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 Can't nobody. Nobody. Can't nobody. Nobody. Can't nobody. Nobody. Can't nobody, nobody. Can't nobody, nobody. Can't 
is where it came back to me. Like Jesus is, is a call to the believer to get deeper in that word, to understand the word, to have the word in your heart that you will not sin against God, to have the word in your heart so you will be better able to call on God. You know, it's like going to a job. If you don't read the handbook, you don't know the benefits. You got to read your handbook, the Bible. The Bible, you got to read the Bible. You got to pursue the word. Because when you pursue the word, you find out things about Jesus that was right there in plain sight. You might didn't know. And you can use, because I believe it's going to be some victories this week to the believer right. in this house. It's going to be some victories that come forth uh, just because you know can't go back and do without Jesus. Amen. And then that gospel, that word might hit different to somebody who doesn't know Jesus in the pardon of their sin. Because see, to activate the goodness of God in your life, to activate God's relate relationship with God in your life, can't nobody do you like Jesus. He hit you like this. That God sent his son from earth, from heaven to earth, to die on the cross, that you would have an opportunity at eternal life. It ought to hit you like that. And you say, can't nobody do you like Jesus? Because can't nobody save you. Can't nobody deliver you. Can't nobody set you free. Can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody bring you to heaven to be what he is when, you, when your time on earth is over. Can't nobody do that. You, you know, we used to hear it. Um, people, men, women, boys and girls don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. See, uh, Jesus got the heaven for you. He just said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. But can I tell you this? As great as that sound, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And the only way to get prepared for heaven is to live for Jesus on the earth. And the only way to live for Jesus on the earth is that you got to accept the work he did. Jesus came and died that we would be saved. That we would be in right relationship with God our Father. Jesus is Jesus as the firstborn of God. The first fruit of God is responsible to God and to man. His responsibility to man was fulfilled on the cross. When he went to the cross, perfect, died for our sins. He took on the sins of all the world, past, present, and future. He took them all. He became sin so he could become the perfect sacrifice. That's why he came. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to accept him. Because when you accept him, Watch this. You accept all that comes with God. Power, grace, anointing, peace, love, and joy, hope, and victory. Well, he is all those things. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody provide that for you but Jesus. Now, you heard what Jesus can provide. You heard that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody save you. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. But now when you accept Jesus, to ask the question, see, this is, this, this is the thing about Jesus. Freely he came. Freely he died. Freely he rose. He did all that out of the goodness of his heart and his love for God's creation, for his creation. He did it even though he was rejected of men. Even though he came to be the light of men and would rather hide in their darkness that they refused him. But he did it anyway. Now, the only thing he won't do is make you is make you love him and accept him. He'll ask. Oh, he'll ask. He'll present. He'll show up. He'll see you. He might try to avoid contact or out contact or whatever. But he's there. He's there, and he's not pushing. He's not pushing. He's not demanding. He's welcome. It's up to you. Today, the Bible said today, the day, you hear my voice. Heart, not your heart. What does that mean? That means that when you hear me talk to you, when you feel me putting me beckoning you, you, you see me beckoning you, don't, don't turn away. Don't say not today. I'm going to 
by the two thousand. Today, what the hours not promise. They used to say, "Hit a day gone tomorrow." Sometimes it's hit a day gone today. They're not trying to be funny. Not trying to be scary. I'm just telling the truth. And you want to be ready to go with Jesus when He comes, whether He comes for you individually or whether He comes in a rapture. You want to be ready. And the way to be ready is to accept Him in your heart. Allow Him to live in your heart. Allow Him to be the Lord of your life. Allow the blood to work on you. Because you might say, oh, I got things I do. I, I can't stop that the blood work. Oh, I, I can't get this up. Let the blood work. I don't, I don't know. I've been doing this all my life. Let the blood work. You can't change yourself. You give your heart to Jesus and you let him change you. Understand that? Let the blood work. When the blood will work, it will never lose its power. Don't make excuses. Make a commitment to Jesus Christ. I'm getting ready to pray. The doors of the church are open. I'm getting ready to pray. You might be somebody here and sound my voice, but they are up or as you watch virtually, at whatever league you're watching right now, we are we are live on Facebook. You may be watching us live on Facebook. You don't know Jesus in the part of every sense. I'm not saying you don't know who Jesus is, because I'm sure you do. I'm sure if you live in America, you have heard about Jesus so many times. But but you don't know him like that intimately as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know him like that, be honest with yourself. Because honesty can See, we can tell ourselves lies here on earth, but there will be no lying at the great throne judgment. There will be no lying because the truth is going to be spoken, not by me, right. but by God. He's going to look at you as you step forward. He's going to say, it's his name. It's your name written in the book of life. The names are going to turn the page. I don't remember writing your name, Lord. No, Lord, I do, I do not see that name. And the Lord will look up at you, and you won't be able to argue your case. You won't read. You won't tell him a reason why you never did gave him your life. He just gonna look at you and say the truth. Depart from me. I never knew you. And you're gone. But you don't have to go nowhere. Because it is desiring of God for you to be in his presence for all eternity. That's his desire. That's why he sent his son. But the only way you can be in his presence for all eternity is to give your heart to his son Jesus Christ. If that's you today, the Lord will be saved. I'm getting ready to pray the prayer. I like to call it the I want to be saved prayer. Some people call it the sinner's prayer. That's their choice. I call it the I want to be saved prayer. Why? Because we all are sinners and fell short of the glory of God. But by his grace, he has saved us. And he lifted us up under the mountain and mountain of clay and placed our feet on the rock to stand. I too have sinned. And fuck and fell short of the glory of God. But I'm forgiven. I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. And he has washed my sins away. When God looks at me, God sees the God sees the blood of his son. And God said, Come on in. I know what you did in the past. Come on in. You gave your heart to me. Come on in. I want that for each and every one of you that don't know the Lord and the part of your son. I want the Lord to look at you and say, come on in, my good and famous servant. Come on in and sit at the table of the Lord. Come on in. I want that for you. God wants that for you. That's prayer. If you care to, repeat after me if you don't know the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm saved. But I want to be saved. I heard this gospel, this good news today. That can't nobody do me like Jesus. Um, life has done me dirty. Friends have done me dirty. I've done people dirty. But I want to change. I wanted my life to be changed. I want my life to count for something. I want my life to be lived for God. I want to be saved. God, 
Allow your son Jesus to be here. I repent. I'm sorry. But not only am I sorry, but I want to change. I want to turn. I want to turn from my ways and to walk in your ways. I repent. Save me, Jesus. Let the blood cleanse me. Wash me. Save me. Save me, Jesus. Right now. In your name. Jesus is name. I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer today, you just ask Jesus to come into your heart, save you from your sin. Allow the blood to wash you, cleanse you, and to, and, and, and to save you. Right now, if you did that, guess what? Jesus did it. He saved you. You, you say, well, Pastor, I don't feel no different. No, no, you might not. But there is a difference. There is a difference. Don't go by your feelings. Understand by faith. Because by faith, you believe in Jesus. By faith, you accept the work he did on the cross. You didn't see it, but you believe by faith he did it. You believe by faith that he rose from the dead. You believe it. You didn't see it, but by faith. So by faith, believe that Jesus is just who he said he is. He is your Savior. And when you ask him, he will deliver you. Jesus just saved you. Matter of fact, if you can look through the portals of if you can look through the portals of heaven right now, you will see the angels scurrying to the book of life. You'll see the angels running to the book of life, opening it up and making an entry that bears your name. Your name is now written in the Lamb Book of Life. You now belong to Jesus. And he, and he wants you to belong to him in such a way that he wants to deliver you, save you, sanctify you, fill you with his Holy Spirit. He wants to lead you and guide you, but you got to allow him. Ask him to be saved is the first step. Now you got to learn about him. So do this for me. First of all, if anybody's around you, tell them, I just got saved. You might not know all the way they did to you, but I just got saved. Confess it. Then, then get you a Bible. Get you a Bible. Start reading. I'm telling you, pursue God's word. I, I encourage you. If you got a smartphone, you got all the Bibles you want. You can you, you can Google or, 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 or get a Bible app, and I would encourage you to get a, a, a get a translation that's easy to read. I would suggest the New International Version. It's, it's easy to read. The language is easy to digest. And start reading in the Book of John. The book of John will tell you so much about Jesus, why he came, what he came to do, how much he loves you, how he did. It'll tell you so much about Jesus. The first thing you'll find out is that in the beginning was the word. First, first line of John 1, that's important. Because Jesus is the word, you need to pursue the word. Amen. And then after you do that, Make sure you get with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church. You may have a church already in mind. You have a church that you are affiliated with. That's fine. But fellowship, go. And if you don't have a church home, we would love to see you right here. 410 North Monroe Street, Richmond's Historic Church and Ward. Reach out. Reach out to me even on Facebook. If you're looking at this on Facebook, that's my page. Send me a message. Reach out. Because I want to know what God has done for you. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise. I need some people that say it today. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Did we enjoy the Lord today? Did we enjoy him? I enjoyed the Lord today. God is always good. Amen. We're going to get ready to go down from this place. I, I appreciate y'all so much. Amen. Amen. Y'all dealt with the turning forward of the clock and made it out. And I believe that God blessed you real good for making it out. I believe that. I hope y'all receive that word today and use that word. And that word will open some doors for you. It's going to open up some doors that, that, that the enemy tried to block and lock. That word is going to open up that word. And when you apply that word, it's going to open up. Amen, brother. Amen. It's going to open up some doors and some victories for you that you've been contending for for a long time. Everybody do you like Jesus. Come on, y'all. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. What's up, my man? Thank you, man. Let's get ready to go down for this place. We praise God for you. And may heaven never shine upon you. Come on, let's go to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you. 
God, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. God, we thank you, God, that you sent your son. That that, 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 that that because you sent him and because of what he did, we we quickly found out, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I thank you, God. God, I pray that the Son continue to work in our lives, that the Son continue to bless us and lift us up as we continue to praise him and give it to him and follow him. God, we thank you for your presence in our service today. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the praises. We thank you for the fellowship. And we thank you for leading in your son. And the Holy Ghost, we thank you. And as we go from this place, don't dismiss us from your spirit. But always keep us blessed and abiding with you as we walk on this road. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Y'all be blessed. Amen. Amen.